Well, bless the morning, friends, folks. We're going to get on today's lesson, but I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of reading uh, Sarah Young's dedicated lesson today, I'm just going to use the scripture that she prescribed, which is Luke 137, and it is simply, nothing is impossible with God. That's it. <laughs> nothing is impossible with God. Look back on the reflection of your life. What does this apply to you? As for me, I can tell you simply, January 5th, 2008, Annie and I, we got in a really terrible fight. And I met Annie in 2004, June in 2004. So count that up from 2004 to 2008, that's four years. And um, I loved my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time, but I always called her my wife from the beginning. We had a connection, but we also we're both bound to party and we like our drinking and we like smoking weed and if there was drugs around we would do some drugs but mainly she liked her vodka i like my 30 packs i like cigarettes and we'd smoke weed and if we didn't have none of that then we were cool with just having cigarettes but usually we would have cigarettes and we would have some beer or i'd have her a little jug my wife had been drinking for I don't know how long, but I can personally tell you that I was drinking for 22 years. I started when I was 14. And it looked like I would never quit. Well, you know what? When I surrendered to the Lord January 5th, 2008, he took that drink from me because I gave it to him. And I was talking to, I'm not going to say who, but I was talking to someone that's on the red road, that's on the good trail. But without the Lord... I don't know how long they'll stay on this trail of being sober, of being clear-minded. And it's hard, but when you have the Lord, there are no impossibilities with God. And it's what, what Luke 137 is. Don't forget, Luke was a physician, but Jesus was their master physician and is still the master physician and highest position. And he will take drugs from you. He'll take alcohol from you. There are no impossibilities with God. And it looked like I would never sober up. And once I did... Some of my very own family members were looking at me like they couldn't believe it. They ain't got no more to talk about me being drunk, doing things out of my mind, you know. So they had to look for the next person to talk to. And I know some of them were real skeptical. Some of them were in disbelief. But years later on down the road at a family reunion, I spoke strong because I didn't speak strong what the Lord did. And basically what I said was, you know, end is long time ago. You used to say, it's a good day to die because they, they got treated like hell straight from every demon that there was to pull them away from the Lord to forget that we are creator's people just like anybody else but I said you know what I said a long time ago they say it's a good day to die I said well today it's a better day to live all you gotta do is give the Lord your heart he'll clean it no matter <laughs> no matter what and all of them that thought it was impossible we'll see that it's straight possible and instead of focusing on you, maybe they need to focus on their kids. Maybe they should focus on their spouse. Maybe they should focus on, you know, their own relationship to the Lord. Because it sounds to me like they're bound by religion. Why, yes, I said that. You know, and if you may not be in the Lord as long as these super veterans. But let me tell you, there's a quickening. And I asked my pastor this, who's been in this word for 40-something years, maybe even longer. And she told me there's a quickening. She goes, and that's why some people are surpassing others that have been in this word for a long time. Once again, because they're stuck in a relationship. They're stuck in a bad relationship because that bad relationship is religion. Well, I go to church. You know, I do this and I do that. But if you, if you don't, if you ain't living right, man, if the inside of you is not, is not clean, then it is defiled. And when you, when you pass from this flesh, the duck of the Jesus Christ is going to tell you himself, depart for I knew you not that is scary yo you know there's other things I have to I have accountability for but that ain't gonna be one of them man I'm not gonna pretend the same Jackie Hunter you see here is the same Jackie Hunter that goes to church the same Jackie Hunter that goes home and is a father to kick and cub so there you go always remember there are no impossibilities of God 22 years of wasting my life the Lord took it away and then I ended up marrying Moheha Winder now Annie November 17, 2010, and I saw it to the end. So that is the commitment that I had to her because of God, and it is just that simple. 
She was told she couldn't have children, but we got two earls in our quiver, them babies, Cake and Cubby. Be blessed in your journey.